so-called brothers and sisters. I hope y'all can hear me because I'm not going to be talking real loud. Today is uh, August the 23rd, 2017. We're sitting here in my home studio and watching a little news today. I'm trying to figure out, which I can't for the life of me, Why are we still doing the things that we're doing to each other? Why are we out here showing out for white people? It's obvious through our history here in this country, they don't care for us, you know? It's obvious. But I see on a daily basis, we going out of our ways to fit in. I remember on Facebook probably about four or five months ago, I put a post up reflecting my feelings on the civil rights movement along the lines of we asked for the wrong things. They wanted equality. They wanted desegregation. And I asked myself, why will we ask to be equal to monsters? I mean, we want to be equal to the same people that took our children, did what they wanted to do with them, took our women, stripped them down, butt naked, had their way with them, took our men, put dogs on them, tied them up by the neck, hung them from trees. And to this day, they celebrate those things. Everything that we came up with, all of our ideas, all of our cultures, they took it. We celebrate all of these different holidays throughout the year. None of them have anything to do with who we really are. I mean, there's so many thoughts going through my mind right now. I don't even know where to start. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but... We ask for the wrong things in the civil rights movement to me. I mean, why would I want to go into your stores and spend my hard-earned money with you knowing that you can't stand me and probably 95% of the item that I'm purchasing in your establishment wasn't created by my people or for my people? Why would we even trust those products we bring into our homes every single day. We would almost give our life to be accepted by monsters. I can't wrap my, my mind around these things. Uh, the way that we go on about relationships with each other it's crazy. One thing I can say about the civil rights movement that I do admire is they did come together. They did fight together. Well, Black Panthers. <laughs> they did protect each other to a certain extent. Black people are a submissive people. The way we act through history proves that we're submissive. We deal more with the spirit than the ways of the world. I say that because during the slavery times we submitted, you know, after slavery we submitted having dogs suck on us or water hoses spraying us.
us grown men with families, with kids, grandfathers, grandmothers, I mean, we submitted to those things. We made them very comfortable in doing what they do to us. I feel like, you know, when the police pull his gun out, getting ready to murder us, I mean, our life is already forfeited from the point that, you know, we pulled over. So, why would we forfeit it for nothing? What What did you get out of it? I mean, dead is dead. You're not coming back. Reminds me of that, that part of Juice when Tupac said, you know, he was looking at the white gangster movie. He was, he was saying something along, along the lines of that's how he wants to go out, you know, with a bang. I mean, that's an ignorant statement that he made, but at the same time was genius, you know. Most geniuses are insane, so <laughs> it's not far-fetched. But if we're out here forfeiting our lives for nothing, you're going to die anyway. Go out with a bang. You know. Go out for a reason. They say a coward dies a thousand times. A man only dies but once. Go out as a man. You going out with your hands up. That's coward. You got your hands up. You still being murdered. You know. All white people are not born bad. Matter of fact, I truly believe none of them are born bad. But they're sure, they're sure taught to be. And if, you know, the good ones sit back and, or the so-called good ones sit back and, you know, just let another day pass when they're with whoever, family, family members, friends, co-workers, and get a taste of how these other people, other whites feel about any race. I don't care. Black, Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, you know, Indians. I don't say Native Americans. I say Indians because that's what I was growing. I, I, that's how I grew up knowing what to call so-called Native Americans, Indians. They're Indians. It just pisses me off the way every race allows white people to name them. They named us Negroes, colored, Afro-Americans, African-Americans, niggers, not, I'm not any of that. I consider myself a Nubian. That, that, that just so happened to be on the path that led me to be born in America. I mean, 9.99% of the time, I don't even feel like an American. Because if I was, then I would have the same privileges as every other American. We allow the white race to dictate who we are. When is that going to stop? When are we going to tell them who we are? When are we going to demand to be what we want to be instead of what they want us to be? I say we are a submissive people because white people have caused more heartache and pain in the last 10 generations on the face of the earth than any other race. This is not a hate message. I don't hate anybody. The, the fact that I'm sitting here making this message proves that. But I just want to know, you know, when will it stop? Because if I go on 
through the rest of my life and it stays the same or get worse or nothing changes, then my life is in vain. Once you start speaking the truth, then the clock is ticking on your life anyway. White people are natural born killers. Every other race on the face of this earth only kill when their life is in intimate, intimate, immediate danger. We kill to survive, hunting for food. White people do it for a sport. It's fun to them. It's in their nature. Won't you get that? I mean, what? How many of us gotta die before people start standing up and saying, you know, enough is enough? I saw a picture of a big fat white man, I guess in his daughter, some female, with a big rifle, posing up beside a dead lion that he had just slain. And the first thought that I had in my mind was, he actually thinks he's a big man for killing that lion at that distance that he did. I wanted to see how tough he was without that rifle, with that lion, while he was still alive. Go and take a selfie then with him. Then you can get props from me for being a big bad man. But you shot him at a distance made sure he was dead before you got anywhere near him and had your people actually take a picture as a trophy look at what i've done but what 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 exactly did you do he didn't have a gun you didn't kill him with your bare hands you didn't wrestle him to death like Samson did what did you do the way that we think we have to we have to break ourselves from this. I mean, take a, a a history lesson. Everything repeats itself. I love the scriptures. I'm, I'm getting more into them every day. Those that first will be last. When that day is coming, that will be a glorious day. I live in a fantasy world in my brain. Because reality is so jacked up that I can't bear to really deal with it. So I create an alternate world inside my brain just to be able to cope with these things. I lost my job almost a year ago. I was a supervisor and a co-worker that was way under me felt, you know, because he was whatever he was and I am whatever I am. He was somewhat, somehow better <laughs> in some kind of way, even though I'm his supervisor. Shooting racial slurs to me for over a week. A week of me having to deal with this. I fired him on the spot the first day, and my supervisor allowed it to go on an entire week before it was taken care of. And I asked myself, why do other races feel the way they feel about our race. It's obvious. I mean, they want to be us, and those who don't want to be us, it's, it's, it's in their DNA to hate us. Either way, those are people that we don't need to be affiliated with in no form or fashion. Why would we want to be? Why would I want to be around someone who wants to be me? Or why would I want to be around a group of people who despise me, despise the sight of me? We need to get it together, people. I mean, there's so much I want to go into, but a little video for YouTube ain't going to change nothing. But maybe it'll spark some thoughts on some of the young people who's destroying themselves and everybody who looks like them maybe to bring it in to that 
I mean, that's my point. That's where we. That's where this have to start. We went backwards. We didn't go backwards in this country because you know a lot of people feel like you know because I got my little nice white job or a nice white house or I drive my nice white car or dress up in my nice fancy white clothes then you know I, I've somehow made it. But we went backwards because during the civil rights movement during the 60s we were together as a people. Today it's like hey if I made it forget everybody else. They deserve to be where they are. And you praise the white person because your so-called success came from them. You didn't make it on your own. You made it with their help. But they didn't really help you because look what you had to sacrifice to get those things. I mean, the ones with the greatest education are the most ignorant those with the most money are the most selfish. The plan was never for you to get ahead like that. The plan was for the strongest people to protect the weak, the healthy to take care of the sick, the educated to get real knowledge and enlighten those that's uneducated. That's not how it is. You look out for yourself. You have nothing to give. No one's looking for any kind of financial support from anybody. I mean, it's too late in the game for that. We've made it this far without you giving us a penny or two. The game plan is for you to reach back with moral support, not financial. To see the injustice. Every time you pass by and see, and I don't care what color you are, every time you pass by and see a car pulled over, you need to make it your business because that's your brother pulled over. That's your sister pulled over. And you need to let the police officer know, hey, you're here to serve the public, so you need to conduct yourself in a manner that reflects that. All of this cockiness and power, you know, hunger, dictator feel like you're some kind of dictator you're gonna do what I tell you to do when I tell you to do it that's not your job if someone is breaking the law it's your, it's your job to uphold that law to the best of your training if it's too hot for you don't feel like your life is in danger every time you pull over someone cause if that's the case you don't need that job if you're that scared to do your civil duty you don't need that job. That's not the job for you. You need a desk job where you're not going to be so afraid. Too many people dying. Sure there's bad guys out there. You need to dispatch someone more professional than yourself to deal with that. Because not everyone's out here bad guys. Sure it is bad guys. But if you're not, if you're not trained enough to deal with the ones who are not truly bad, then you don't need to deal with the bad ones. You don't need to deal with any anybody in the public. It's so much dialogue that needs to be articulated. It's kind of late, so I'm not going to try to articulate it tonight. But hopefully this will start a dialogue, you know, because they hate us, and we're just sitting here going day by day, nothing's changing, it's getting worse, we're hating, they, they done brainwashed us to start hating each other, <laughs> it's no, when will it stop, every brace want to be white, why, why would you want to be a monster, white people are not good, nine of them out of ten that I came across haven't been, the one that, that has been, I cherished them, I have love. I'm willing to fight. But the other nine, I have no love for you. Why would I? Why should I? How could I? What you did to my great grandparents, those that came before them, the way you talk to my people, 
even to this day, you have any kind of disagreement or conflict, the first thing that pop out of one of y'all mouths is nigger. And that's always been funny to me. I, I don't even argue. Because if you're calling someone a nigger, you're basically saying that you think that you are better than them for some reason. But it doesn't make sense to me because if you're better than them, why would you go through such length to show so much hatred? Ugly racial slurs. I mean, if I was better than you, then I know not to mess with you and just keep it moving. Instead of taking time out of my life to sit here and try to call you a ugly name. <laughs> that just don't make no sense. White people say, we don't belong here. We told y'all that 500 years ago. 400 years, however many years ago. <laughs> when y'all kidnapped us from where we was. Where we thought we belonged. Mexicans trip me out. Because they act like, you know, we don't belong here. It's just as much. Let me, let me change that. Some Mexicans. Right? Some of them I came in contact with. You know, I'm in New Mexico now, so I can speak on that. It's nothing but, you know, Indians and Mexicans out here. And white people. Hardly no blacks, so it goes without, without saying, you know. Even if it was blacks, it wasn't like, you know, I have some kind of allies with them. Because that's what this whole video is about. But the Mexicans act like, you know, we're not supposed to be here. And they are for some kind of reason. And it just blows my mind. I seen some comedian on TV say at one time that we was forced to come here. And they volunteered. That's a big difference. So, no, we're not supposed to be here. I mean, but why go there? Who's supposed to be here? I mean, this is Native American, Indian land. They're supposed to be here. Everybody else is visitors. Everybody else is, is kidnappers. Everybody else is robbers and thieves. So the Mexicans that been cruel to me since I've been here, I see you trying to align yourself with white people, and it's like, why? What are you getting out of that? White people hate you. <laughs> they got laws that'll deport you in a minute. Those of you who not supposed to really be here, you know. And those of you who was born here, they don't care. They don't want you here either. Pick your side, man. Pick your side. It's not black or white. It's right and wrong. It's good versus evil. The clock is ticking. God is watching. Peace. BG out.